Get ready for a different gable. The King of Hollywood may have been idolised by legions of women, but behind the lens of the camera, Clark Gable's actual personality was never visible. This video spills the beans on how the guy who would later be known as The King managed to rise to stardom by teaming up with quite a few ladies. It will show you a side of him that's not as shiny as his star image. How he was always chasing after women, ignoring his own daughter, and feeling unsecure about himself. This video brings out things we've never seen before. Clark Gable was a trailblazer in Hollywood, known for being the first tough and handsome movie star that people swooned over. He came onto the scene when movies started having sound, and he was different from the dapper and fancy guys of the 1920s. He came before the friendly and relatable guys of the late 1930s. He wasn't like the elegant Cary Grant. Gable's down-to-earth attitude and charm attracted both men and women. On the screen he looked like a guy's guy, someone who trusted and hung out with, but wasn't too sure about the women who were interested in him because of his rugged good looks. People often talk about his strong attraction to others. Joan Crawford, who was once his girlfriend and worked with him in movies, said, "'He was the most manly man I've ever met.' Even guys thought Gable was impressive. Samuel Marks, who helped with the story for Gone with the Wind, talked about Gable's amazing sense of strength and control. Everything about him just seemed strong and manly. In her own book, Doris Day, who acted with him in Teacher's Pet, shared, He had really big hands and a strong, large-built body that made him seem impressive. There was something very confident about him, and a straightforward way of talking that showed he had a lot of inner power. It was the mix of his friendly and genuine personality, handsome appearance, strong body and the way he attracted people that made Gable popular in movies and in real life. The fact that he was also a good actor was like an extra gift, even though Gable never really saw his own talent. He was a very private person and did rarely talk about himself but there are a few things that he said that give us an idea of his opinion of himself. In an interview in 1937, he said, I'm not a great actor. I'm just a good actor who works hard. He also said, I'm not a genius. I'm just a guy who's lucky enough to have been able to make a living doing what I love. Interesting, isn't it? This Hollywood icon, the one who had us all mesmerised, was just a regular guy at heart. Those words reveal a side of him that wasn't always in the spotlight. It's like he had a secret identity, not as a superhero, but as a modest and down-to-earth human being. Despite his modesty, Gable was confident in his abilities as an actor. He once said, I know what I can do, and I know what I can't do, and I'm not afraid to try anything. Gable was also known for his self-deprecating humour. Hardly anyone knew about this side of him. While he played serious roles and exuded charisma on screen, off screen, Gable had a knack for poking fun at himself. He once said, I'm not the handsomest guy in the world, but I'm the only one who can act like Clark Gable. Gable's opinion of himself was shaped by his humble beginnings. He was born into a poor family and had to work hard to achieve success. He never forgot his roots and always remained grounded. In 1901, in the countryside of Ohio, Gable was born to a dad who worked with oil and a mum who passed away shortly after he was only ten months old. When he was born, there was a little mix-up on his birth certificate and they accidentally marked him as a girl. Clark's life had a lot of surprising ups and downs right from the start. After his mum passed away, his dad didn't stick with the Catholic way of life they had at the beginning. He got criticism from his mother's side of the family because they didn't quite agree with this change. Lucky for them, Clark spent time with his uncle and aunt who lived on a farm and he got to know the Catholic Church again, the way his mum knew it. From a young age, Clark Gable stood out from the other kids. He was a bit shy. While most boys his age were hanging out with friends, Gable preferred spending time with his dad working on cars. His father wanted him to do manly things like hunting, but Gable had other interests. He loved music and joined the town's band. He was into reading and learning different languages. He could even recite Shakespeare's sonnets when guests came over. His dad, even though he wanted Clark to be more of a man's man, actually supported him a lot. He got his son a bunch of books to enjoy from his library. He found love and got married to a super-talented lady named Josephine Dillon. She wasn't just any lady. She was an actress and director. Josephine wasn't just a set-mum. She became like a guiding star for Clark. 
She played a huge role in making Clark a superstar. She taught him how to be an awesome actor and even helped him become more confident. Clark had dentures from a relatively young age due to gum disease. Josephine also wanted Clark to have a perfect smile, so she made sure he got some dental work done. Now when you see dimples in his pictures, you can thank Josephine for making it happen. Even though he had dentures, he felt a bit unsure about his teeth. He wasn't thrilled with the way his dentures looked. He was even worried about how they made him sound when he talked. He was concerned that his dentures might just decide to take a leap and fall out when he was out and about. At first it might have seemed like Gable would end up working on an oil rig rather than becoming a famous actor. As the 1920s rolled in, he found his path to fame through the hearts of women. His deep voice and tough guy appearance made him a favourite among women, and his fans' admiration started to overshadow his connection with Dylan. Back in the 1920s, Clark Gable had a few small roles in movies, but you know where he really felt at home? On stage. Acting in front of a live audience was his jam. Then in 1928, he met Rhea Langham, a lady from Texas. She was quite a bit older than him, 17 years to be exact, she played a big role in his life, just like his previous mentor. Because of Rhea, Clark got the opportunity to star in his first real movie in 1931. It was a western, The Painted Desert. With Dylan's support left behind, Gable teamed up with a Hollywood powerhouse named Mayna Wallace. She skillfully reconnected him with MGM, who was on the lookout for talents like Gable. Starting in smaller roles, Gable's performances caught the studio's eye, leading to meteor roles including the film Hell Divers, where he shared nearly equal screen time with the lead actor Wallace Beery. As soon as he stepped onto the stage, Gable captured everyone's attention. Fan letters started pouring in, and MGM recognised Gable's rugged masculinity and marketed him as a rugged man who could also shine in a suit, like a lumberjack in evening wear. In that very year, his charm spread far and wide. Joan Crawford herself requested him as her co-star in Dance Fool's Dance. He then dazzled in A Free Soul, and from that moment he stepped into the spotlight as a leading man in every role he took on. Critics sang his praises, and the Hollywood Reporter boldly stated, A star is born, one who, in our view, will shine brighter than any other. Audiences have never known such excitement as when Clark Gable graces the screen. Following this, Gable's star power continued to rise as he took on role after role. He was making more films in his first year of fame than many experienced actors do in a lifetime. Despite being in his second marriage, Gable found himself entangled in a passionate affair with Joan Crawford. The situation caused quite a stir. MGM threatened to cancel their contracts and blacklisted them from the industry. Gable and Crawford eventually parted ways. Yet, true to his unpredictable nature, Gable soon found himself in another affair, this time with Marion Davis, even though he was still married. In 1932, Gable joined MGM and quickly became Hollywood's king. From 1932 to 43, he was always one of the most popular actors at the box office. People loved his tough and confident style on the screen and his bold yet playful way of talking. His first big hit was the steamy movie Red Dust. It was quite daring and exciting for its time, especially with his co-star, the 20-year-old platinum blonde Jean Harlow. According to everyone, Harlow was described as sweet, passive and totally uninhibited. Unaware of the impact her stunning looks had on everyone around her, she faced constant criticism, sometimes even in front of everyone on the movie sets. People treated her like an amateur. Jean turned to Gable for support, but he was also new and couldn't offer much comfort. Neither of us knew much about the business, Gable later said. At the end of every scene, she would ask me, how am I doing? And I would ask her the same. Although they were both shy, Jean and Clark eventually became close friends during filming, forming a bond that lasted for the rest of her life. Gable, who sported an unshaven look in the film, a stark contrast to his usual polished appearance, took part in a passionate scene with Harlow, who appeared without a bra. It was a very scandalous move for that era. This single fiery scene ignited his career, propelling him to become MGM's reigning star. A year later, in 1933, Gable and Harlow joined forces again for the blockbuster Hold Your Man. Gable's performance was so magnetic that MGM labelled him a guaranteed hit, 
leading to more movies alongside Harlow. This dynamic duo worked together in four more films until tragedy struck during the production of Saratoga in 1937. Harlow passed away. Despite his evident grief, Gable soldiered on, completing the film, though the final scenes were captured using distant shots and body doubles. This left Gable with a haunting feeling, as he described it, in the arms of a ghost. But the movie that turned him into a Hollywood star wasn't done at MGM. As a consequence for turning down a task, Gable was sent to Columbia to star in Frank Capra's funny movie It Happened One Night. He even won an Oscar for playing Peter Warne, the confident news reporter who goes on a journey across the country with a runaway heiress named Claudette Colbert. Years later, Colbert shared a surprising secret. Even though they were married, Colbert and Gable had a passionate affair while filming. Not a surprise, you can feel that chemistry between them in the movie. Claudette Colbert's beauty shined next to Gable, and she used her charm. Claudette even used her looks to stop a car, proving a leg can stop traffic better than a thumb. Warren was the ultimate Gable character, stubborn, full of himself, playful, but very lovable. His way with girls set the tone for Gable's movie roles. Women puzzled him, and he handled them like mischievous kids. He could be tough, even a bit mean, yet his I-don't-care attitude made him fascinating. He played the guy who leads, but since his co-stars were strong too, they usually outsmarted him. You might know Gable best as Rhett Butler from Gone with the Wind, but did you know he was quite unsure about taking that role? Even though everyone wanted him to play it, he wasn't sure if he could. He once said, That's the only picture I ever did in which the girl wasn't sure she wanted me the moment she saw me. Gable was usually more comfortable in his choices of movies, and he was a bit scared of anything that might make him seem less tough. He wasn't very confident about showing his softer side. Despite being a big star, he still had his doubts and worries like anyone else. In her own book, Myrna Loy shared something interesting about Gable. She said, He loved poetry and read beautifully with great sensitivity, but he wouldn't let anybody else know it. He was afraid people would think him weak or effeminate. Myrna Loy thought that Gable had a tough image that he didn't want to break. She believed this was a problem for him, and it might have even caused his death. He was working on his last film, The Misfits, in the hot Nevada desert. He didn't want someone to take his place, even though it was very tough for him. In this film, he starred alongside the iconic Marilyn Monroe and talented Montgomery Clift. It's interesting to note that this was the final completed movie for both Gable and Monroe. Gable's part in the film was released after he passed away, and Monroe left us the following year. Well, the movie is about a woman who's recently divorced. She spends time with a cowboy, Gable, a tow truck driving friend, Wallach, and a rodeo riding friend, Clift, in the vast western Nevada. Even though the film didn't do so well when it came out, people today appreciate the story and the acting. Some even say that Gable's acting in this movie is some of his best ever. He watched the early versions of the film and agreed. Even in his twilight years, Gable's on-screen magnetism remained undiminished. His chemistry with the enigmatic Marilyn Monroe was electric, igniting not only the cinematic magic, but also an alluring connection between the two. There were some challenges during filming, but Gable, Monroe, Clift and Wallach delivered outstanding performances that critics now praise. There have been various speculations about what might have led to his passing after the movie's completion. In The Misfits, Gable had a physically demanding role that involved working with horses, including yanking on reins and even being dragged by them. Some people believe that these rigorous activities might have taken a toll on his health and contributed to his sudden death. Others point to Gable's crash dieting before filming began. It's said that he undertook a strict diet to prepare for the role, which could have affected his well-being. Additionally, it's important to note that Gable was a lifelong smoker. Smoking can have serious health effects, and Gable's habit might have played a role in his health issues. Only a few weeks before the birth of his only son, on November 16, 1960, he passed away from an immense heart attack. He was a true Hollywood legend. For an impressive 37 years, Gable stood tall as one of the most iconic leading men in the history of the silver screen. Gable wasn't just a movie star, he was an icon. 
His life was like a captivating soap opera, filled with love stories and personal challenges. He even bravely served in World War II, showing his courage both on and off the screen. Despite all the ups and downs, Gable's star shone brighter than ever in Hollywood. He was the actor everyone admired in his time. His movies didn't just entertain, they dominated the box office a whopping sixteen times. Can you believe he acted in a grand total of sixty-seven movies? And not just any movies, some of the most beloved films in history. Clark Gable's legacy lives on, and his stories continue to captivate us. His story continues to inspire, proving that even in the ever-changing world of entertainment, true greatness leaves an indelible mark. Curious to know more? Stay tuned for our next video. Why were Carol Lombard's scandals kept under wraps?